In this short video, let's talk about TGF beta signaling. This is included in the cell signaling playlist. If you want to check out the whole playlist, click on the i button. So transforming growth factor beta or TGF beta signaling is really important signaling pathway in context of cancer, cell division and development. So there are different type of TGF beta receptors. So there are type three TGF beta receptors that we would be naming as R3 that kind of binds to the TGF beta dimer. So TGF beta is the ligand in this case. So TGF beta ligands undergo several processing, which we would learn later part of the video. Now TGF beta gets transferred from the receptor three to type two receptors. Also there are type one receptors involved in the signaling pathway. So type two receptors are already phosphorylated. They are serine threonine kinases and TGF beta get transferred from receptor type three to type two. Now after transferred, after being transferred to the type two receptor, receptor type one comes in close contact with the R2. That leads to the phosphorylation of the type one receptor. It's important to note that type one receptor does not bind to the TGF beta, but it is indirectly getting phosphorylated when TGF beta binds to the type two receptor. Now this is the membrane part of the signal initiation. So this is where the signal is initiated. Now what happens is there are specific SMADs such as SMAD3 can bind to these phosphorylated receptor and get activated. Now these activated SMAD3 eventually interacts with other co-SMADs. So there are co-SMADs like SMAD4. These SMAD4 and SMAD3 creates a complex together which interact with the signaling, uh, with the nuclear import signals. So basically these are, these are part of a big complex. SMAD3 are phosphorylated. That means all the R SMADs are phosphorylated. SMAD4 are not phosphorylated, but they together form a complex. Eventually they move to the nucleus and bind to a specific receptor, a specific um, binding site on the DNA, which lead to transcription activation. So there are specific uh, transcription factors such as TFE3, which can associate it with these SMAD3 and SMAD4 complex, forming an activation complex that cooperatively bind to a specific geometry in the regulatory region of the genes. So now we understand what happens at the nuclear level as well. Now question is which gene is transcribed? Which gene is activated? The category of genes that are activated by TGF beta signaling would be discussed in a moment, but there could be different type of on and off mechanism of the signaling pathway. So here we are looking at the TGF beta bind. Uh, so we are looking at the SMAD binding regions. So here you can see the SMAD3 and SMAD4. That means the receptor bound SMAD and the co-SMAD. These are interacting with transcription factor TFE3, which has a positive regulation on transcription. It it regulates the transcription initiation of the nearby genes. So this is an on configuration. There could be also off configuration where SKI attracts NCOR and HDAC complex complexes that literally lead to histone deacetylation and heterochromatinization of the promoter region. That leads to the switching off of the TGF beta pathway. So at the nuclear level, depends on which type of uh, which type of component these SMADs interact with detects the uh, dictates the outcome of the TGF beta signaling, whether it would be turned on or off depends on the partner that these SMAD complex interact with inside the nucleus. Now we are going to talk about inhibitory SMADs. So there are different kinds of SMADs other than the CO and the R SMADs. SMAD6 and SMAD7 inhibit TGF beta pathway by preventing the phosphorylation or they can even degrade them. Also, there are negative feedback loops. That means SMAD7 can literally prevent the phosphor uh, uh, phosphorylation of the SMAD3. So it disrupt the receptor and SMAD interaction. This is how it literally negatively regulate the SMAD pathway. So all the inhibitory SMADs are really important in context of regulation of TGF beta signaling. Now TGF beta regulates cell cycle uh, progression. We always know in the cell cycle progression in the transition of G1 to S, there is a restriction point 
which is guarded by the tumor suppressor protein PRB. Cyclin D and CDK4 actually phosphorylates PRB, which releases the E2F, and that triggers the formation of cyclin E, and that helps in the progression to the next stage. Now, TGF-beta signaling pathway produces a molecule known as P15-INK4. So, P15 is a molecule that inhibits cyclin D-CDK4. So, obviously, we can understand if cyclin D and CDK4 is inhibited, there is nobody to phosphorylate PRB. And the progression of the cell cycle would be paused at that stage. So, moral of the story. TGF-beta signaling generally inhibits cell proliferation. Look, the name is a little bit... Uh, 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 inappropriate because basically TGF beta stands for transcript uh, transforming growth factor beta so it has nothing to do with growth factor like activity it actually prevents the growth saying that this signaling has huge implication in context of cancer because if this regulation goes wrong then there would be uncontrolled proliferation entry into the cell cycle and the cell would proliferation uh, proliferate madly leading to tumor formation right now, before that, we should understand how there is a regulation of these TGF-beta molecules. So basically, TGF-beta molecule has two domain. One is mature domain, one is pro-domain. The pro-domain has to be cleaved eventually. And the mature domain would form hetero or homodimer. This mature domain is something that is bound to a receptor. There is also a latency uh, kind of protein shown here in orange that binds to the pro domain also they form uh, temporary disulfide bonds and they kind of create a latent complex preventing these tgf beta from actively transduce signal but the mature form uh, happens when there is a cleavage of these ltbp segment and this mature form binds to the receptor now let's discuss the importance of tgf beta signaling in context of cancer so obviously we can understand TGF beta can have a tumor suppressor role because it inhibits cell cycle entry or uncontrolled movement through the cell cycle. So thereby it prevents the tumor formation. But at the later stage of cancer progression, it has opposite roles. So it, its role is highly contextual. It can literally trigger epithelial to mesenchymal response and, uh, and basically it can induce uh, metastasis. So it can dislodge cell from the uh, basement membrane and allow them to move to the distant location. So TGF beta plays highly context dependent roles in context of cancer. It is also important in context of fibrosis because TGF beta give rise to many gene expression. Some of them are synthesizing the extracellular matrix components such as collagen. And that is why it positively reg regulates the formation of fi fibrous scar in different tissues like lungs, like liver, kidney, etc. That is how TGF-beta signaling is really important in context of fibrosis. So in this video, we talked about the TGF-beta signaling pathway. We looked at the TGF-beta receptor, ligand, and how the signal transduction occur via RSMAD and the COSMAD. And we also looked at the, how the response is orchestrated at the nuclear level. So I hope this video was good and informative enough. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook page or Instagram page. Links are provided in the description. You can support our channel using super thanks. See you in the next video.